How are we doing, everybody? Hopefully you are all doing very, very well, and hopefully this video is gonna make you feel a lot better about yourselves as well. You see, today we are going to be talking about the golf lesson that we all need. Now, whether you are an aspiring professional golfer or whether you are a high, mid, or even a complete beginner, today's lesson is gonna leave you understanding the golf swing and what you should be working on in a lot more detail with a huge amount of more clarity. You see, what happens is when people come to visit for lessons, whether that be face-to-face, -face, four rushes where I teach, whether it's online, whether sometimes people just send in the swings via some of the social media platforms, they just go, hey Russ, I'm working on this. And it's normally like, I'm working on impact. I'm trying to get my hands further forward at the point of impact, or I'm working on this wrist position. And what we need to understand is what are characteristics, which basically just means the things that they can look loads of different ways, right? You just have to turn on the TV, look at the PGA Tour, men's, women's, and you'll go, wow, that swing looks so different compared to that one. But they're both pro golfers, right? It's like, okay, so therefore that would be a characteristical trait. But we need to be able to decipher the difference between a characteristical trait and a fault and that's exactly what we're going to be doing in today's video. So ultimately what we are looking for in the golf swing is with a repeatable ball flight. That doesn't necessarily matter whether the ball is fading or drawing, so it's curving from right to left, left to right, or it's pretty neutral in terms of it doesn't have too much curve on it. As long as it is repeatable and therefore predictable, you have a good chance of finding consistency. To be able to find consistency in your ball flight, you therefore also need to be able to have a very sound, repeatable, biomechanical movement of the golf swing. Therefore meaning that you need to have the ability to be able to do the same thing on a repeatable level. That is what we are all aiming for. And the question would be, well, yeah, like you know, I, I've got a friend who plays a draw and he's actually a single figure golfer. I've got a friend who plays a fade. The question is, is how do you get to that level of repeatability? And like we said, there's characteristical choices in there. But in today's video, we're gonna focus on five core principles of the things that you need to abide by to get to that level of consistency in your golf swing. Not only we're gonna take it a step further and help you how to get those five principles into your game with great feedback. And we're also gonna take a look at four different ranges of golfers and we're basically just going to do the same thing. We're going to look at what the better golfers do well and what the sort of higher handy, mid handicap golfers maybe don't do as well. So like I said, by the time we're finished today, huge amount of clarity on what you need to do moving forward. Let's get stuck in. So the first fundamental basic, or if you like the first principle that we have to get right would be posture. Now within posture, what we have to do is we have to broaden it a little bit more than just saying posture. What we have to do is we have to take into consideration alignment. We have to take into consideration the grip. If you like, these are the sort of things that are static above the golf ball. Posture, alignment, grip. Keeping it really simple, obviously your alignment, you wanna point the club face in the direction where you're basically aiming, and you wanna stand parallel to it. That's as simple as you just basically need to be able to do when you're playing golf. Reference the grip. All we are looking for in the grip is that you are trying to just make sure, I would suggest that the thumbs are on the either side of each handle. Okay, so what we don't mind, or what I don't mind as a coach, is whether somebody chooses to rotate their lead hand quite a long way over the ball, or less, or their trail hand more underneath, or less. Not concerned about that. All that it does is when you change your grip is that you're basically just changing the biomechanical makeup of your setup position. So it means that things will look indifferent, but it doesn't necessarily mean that things will become less functional or less repeatable. What we do need to do though is we need to avoid a fault. And a fundamental fault with the grip lies in the thumbs. Opposable thumbs are very strong. And if your thumbs start to work on the same side of the handle, then this will start to manipulate the club face one way or another. Therefore, that's something that 100% you want to miss. That's the grip. The one that I tend to see most more experienced golfers, okay, because when you're a beginner, the first probably lesson that you're gonna have is here's how to stand to the ball, here's your ball position, here's basically how you should hold the club, it makes sense. Once you've learned that, you'll also realize that there's elements of tolerances of things you can and can't do. The posture, however, is a bit of a killer, really. 
And what we're trying to avoid is we're trying to avoid setting up to the golf ball where the hips would fall too far behind your ankle line. This would be a sort of serious problem, which is gonna lead into another principle which we'll discuss in a moment. Now, like I said, not only am I gonna share the principles with you, I'm gonna show you exactly how to get out of these problems as well. And the best thing to do this is at home is to get up against the wall. And first things first, what you wanna do is when you're standing up nice and straight, you basically just wanna tuck your hips underneath you, which basically just means, imagine it's like a mini ab crunch where you're getting your belt buckle closer to your chin and then get yourself about a club head's distance away from the wall. So at this point now, your spine should be nice and neutral. Put your hands on your thighs and reach down to touch your knees and your hips should only slightly touch the wall. And this would be a much more sound postural position, which is avoiding too much excessive spine curve and avoiding any excessive hitting, you, uh, allowing your hips to sit too far behind you. Those are the problems, that's to overcome them. And that's the first principles when it comes to posture. Posture kindly lends itself then to what we would be classing nowadays as hip depth. Hip depth basically just means the importance of, in the backswing, getting the trail hip to rotate behind your original tush line. If you like, avoiding standing up. So again, golfers that tend to sit down too much in the posture will find it very difficult to rotate in posture, so therefore will then start to stand up. To avoid this, that's why we've talked about the posture. Second to that though, what you have to do in the backswing position is you have to get your trail hip working back behind you as we swing the club back. The best way around this, you've got two options. Option number one is you can use a chair or your golf bag or something behind you when you practice. That would be the first thing that you can do because that's something that you can do down the driving range and at home. And the idea is, is that as you swing back, you should be staying in contact with the object behind you or even feeling like you're slightly pushing it further back. That's what you should do. If you don't want to do that, then your second option is to video your golf swing and to draw a line on the back of your tush, if you like your bum cheek, basically. And what you should be not doing is lifting forward. And what you should be doing is actually your trail hip should move slightly behind that line. And that would be hip depth. This is important just to make sure that you stay on that line or push it back that is it. It's tricky, I'm not gonna lie. It's known as separation, disassociation. It's sequencing, essentially. It's something that has to happen in your golf swing. And unfortunately, I tend to see that some golfers sort of just neglect it because it's quite a complicated issue. But it is something that if you can get it correct, it's generally what you'll find all great golfers do. The ones that don't get it correct are the ones that end up with elements of inconsistency. See, if you can't separate in your golf swing, you're generally going to fall foul of two things. The first one is over the top, which is a problem. This is when your lower body and your upper body rotate at the same rate of rotation at the start of the downswing. This is a really common high handicapper problem. The other problem that we tend to see is golfers, therefore, that don't know how to separate and move the lower body away from the upper body, and then they start to move too much in a lateral fashion, and this leads to the club getting slightly under plane, therefore lending itself to hooks and blocks. Do you see what I mean? It's the most common thing. The way that you overcome this, again, is through practice and through a level of understanding. And the question is, like we've done with all the other, is how do you separate? Well, the first thing to do is you need to feel what separation is and everybody will be able to separate unless you have like a fusion of the spine or some sort of problem there, then you're gonna have more difficulty and you'll have to work your golf swing around it. For the vast majority though, you will be able to adhere to some level of separation. The first point is it's not a huge motion and you can experiment with this, by doing disassociation tests, if you like, which basically just means trying to coordinate moving your lower body independently away from your upper body. That's what you need to feel. Then you need to be able to 
understand exactly how to sequence that in the downswing. And the best thing to avoid going into too much complexity is if you place a cane vertically behind your lead ankle, so in the center, if you like, of your foot, as you start your downswing, you are trying to get that same sense of separation, but you're also trying to re-establish getting the center of your left bum cheek, or glute if you like, onto that line. What this will do is this will quite cleverly give you the correct amount of rotational and linear motion to start the downswing, therefore leading to a separation, therefore leading to what would be known as a very sound and repeatable biomechanical start to the downswing. Complicated? Yes. A must? Yes. Three down, two to go. The, the next one is plane. Now what plane basically means is how do we move the club? Where do we move it? Do we move it over here? Do we lift it up here? What do we do? And actually there's a really solid reference point. You see, what surprises me is a lot of amateur golfers understand what out to win, into out actually means, but don't necessarily know how to rectify it. And you've got two options to understand what plane is. The first thing that I'm gonna suggest is that you have to understand and break the golf club down into two components. You would have to break it down so you've got the golf shaft and you've got the club face. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to basically move the club shaft in the correct amount of space, which we'll come to in a second. And we're also trying to time, making sure that we return the club face square at the point of impact. They're two separate motions, if you like. Now, to control the club shaft and to move it on, shall we say, the best angle, you've got two options to understand this. The first option, which I wouldn't suggest, because I did it once and it's just in the way, is to build yourself a plane board. Now a plane board is just a plane, as you can kind of see here, and the idea is that basically it lives on the target line and would run up through your elbow line, and basically you can just run the club shaft up and down that line, and that's you swinging the club shaft, if you like, on plane. Your other option is to buy yourself a laser pen and basically just trace a straight line with the shaft of your golf club. Yes, tracing a straight line with the shaft of your golf club means the club will work on an arc. And when golfers do this, it surprises them, but it educates them and it saves you a huge amount of time. Like I said, you will also need to get the club face square as you accompany your ability to stay on plane, but plane is a very, very important principle and it leaves the last one which is the trail elbow. So your trail elbow, or if you like, your trail arm. What we are trying to do with your trail arm is actually really, really important. In the backswing position, your trail arm is trying to help you maintain width in the swing, which basically just means it is trying to operate to help you keep your lead arm straight as it helps you, generally for most golfers being the stronger arm, helps you apply a widening, movement in the backswing position. So as we swing back, the one thing that we're trying to certainly avoid is allowing the trail arm to bend too much because this will mean that the lead arm will also collapse. You need to feel like the trail hand is pushing the club away. What the trail arm is also doing is it's helping support the impact area. So one of the big things that we tend to see with most amateur golfers is that the impact area looks flippy. And this is normally because the trail arm, if you like, is too far to the side of the body and it's not enough in front of the body. So understanding how your trail arm is supposed to move in the golf swing, yet again, is a really, really important thing to do. And the best way for you guys to be practicing this is to get yourself a bit of string a bit of string or a bit of a resistance tubing or whatever it might be. And like you can kind of see here, kind of create a bit of a lasso. Now the lasso should end up being the length of your lead arm. And in that backswing position, what you're basically trying to do is you are trying to keep that width all of the time. And that's a really simple exercise yet again to get the correct feeling of exactly how to apply width and how that trail arm should be functioning through the golf swing. Those are the five principles sort of briefly summarized, but those are the five things that need to exist. Let's have a look now at some different levels of golfers, different levels of golf swings, and put it all together. Let's do our comparison. We have 
Stefan, our high handicapper who's featured on the channel before, we're aware of his problems, but we're going to reiterate it in cases you haven't seen him before. And we've got Wayne. First thing is, all the golfers that are going to be featuring on the channel moving forward, hopefully, will stay on the program and they will, we will be able to discuss not only their faults and highlight that to them, but we're also going to try and hopefully document their progress as well, because that's far more important than just telling somebody necessarily what they're doing wrong. That's a big thing for me this year. Now, um, let's make the assumption that I know the grips are okay, alignment is okay, I'm making an assumption there. Um, but what we can start to see, we'll start with Wayne as he's already kind of got the start in the backswing. So what I can see with Wayne, which is something that I think we need to address slightly, would be in the posture, I think we're a little bit too much over the golf ball. So I think what that might lead to is in the backswing position is a little bit of a loss of posture and that's exactly what we see here. So we can see the way that as he starts his, um, sorry, if he, as he finishes his backswing, he's standing up, if you like, or coming out of posture, which means as he starts the downswing, to be honest with you, that's exactly why we're doing this now. It's like posture, hip depth, do you see what I mean? Like they're in order of priority of what you should be trying to do. You know, Wayne can't work on anything else, in my opinion, unless he resolves his hip depth. You know, obviously it depends to the tolerance with the different golfers that we're looking for, but when we point this position here, we're far too close. You know, we're moving closer towards the target line than we are staying on our touch line. And I feel like some of that is triggered because of posture, but it's also something that he's going to have to rectify. This is going to lead to his inability to keep the club, shall we say, on plane, inevitably swinging slightly above plane, leading to an out-to-wing club path. It's going to become worse with the longer clubs, which is obviously what we're going to see with Stefan. So the big thing for Wayne is work on your posture, but second to that, you have to work on the hip depth, right? We know this is going to be the same sort of story with Stefan, just based on the simple fact that he's featured on the channel before. Posture seems okay to me, but again, in the backswing position, there's that loss of hip depth, which means, again, he's moving closer towards the ball than anything else. This is therefore going to inevitably lead to the same sort of problem, which is that a swinging above plane nature. And that's it, right? That's going to mean out to win hitting. The interesting thing, which obviously we can't possibly talk about in today's video, but is why is then weighing a mid handicap golfer and Stefan's a high handicap golfer if they've got the same swing fault? That's interesting because some of you, I'm hoping, are really keen on trying to work on your swings and developing. Other golfers, I'm hoping, maybe aren't, and you're still looking at ways to develop your game, and that's going to be a strong talking point of this year as well, but just not in today's video. Let's progress on to our pro scratch golfer. Pro me, amateur George on the other side. Um, it's not an egotistical thing worrying about using my swing. It's actually more just a bit of, a, shall we say, a bit of a copyright thing. I don't really want to use into the pro swing and it becoming a problem. So we're going to use my swing and we have George's swing. So we're going to do the same thing. George's scratch golfer is featured a lot on the channel. Again, he'll feature a lot on the channel moving forward into this year. Um, and it should be an interesting year for George this year because now hopefully the pandemic is moving well and far behind us, he will have an opportunity to play much more competitive golf over the upcoming weeks. Look, what are you gonna learn from here? You're not gonna see a huge problem when it comes to the five core principles. You can see characteristical things and differences between the swings. And this is the big thing for you better golfers out there. I get a lot of good golfers that reach out to me and they don't like how their swing looks. They go, Russ, I, I don't like this wrist position, or Russ, I don't like the way I release the club, or Russ, I don't like this and that. And it's like, you've got to be really careful because you're arguably potentially changing things because you don't like the way they look. And that doesn't necessarily mean that they're not functional. That's a big part of this year as well. Anyway, point is, you're going to see some big differences characteristically between George and I. Let's start with myself. Um, posture, I'd be careful a little bit with George. He does fall a bit vulnerable of sticking his bum out a little bit too much in his posture position, but because he's flexible enough, he can recover, but it's something maybe he needs to look at. Takeaway, um, quite conventional for myself, running through the plane line up towards the top of the backswing. We can see the way that the left wrist is slightly flexed, right leg stays flexed, maintain hip depth. That's the priority. Transition, we're gonna see separation of motion. Club is therefore dropped down, right arm, helps me keep the club on plane. I personally prefer to play a draw 
which means that we'll see a slight discrepancy of the club head traveling on an into out club path, therefore giving me the ability to draw the ball, swing through, release, happy days, right? Similar with George. So takeaway, fine, through plane, top of the backswing, stronger hip depth. See the way his trail hip is further behind the line than mine was, therefore the right leg is straighter than mine was. Not a necessity, a preference. Transition, strong separational motion, it comes down, club comes down on plane, coming in towards the hitting area, we can see the difference on, again, the trail hip, way, way deeper than mine was. That's gonna mean his release is gonna look completely different. Yes, we'll come to that in the future. Too many of you, too many of you gotta be careful about, oh, I shouldn't be rolling. There's a lot of talk about you shouldn't roll, you should hold. Holding is a byproduct of better clearance. So we'll come back to that. And then as we swing through, good hip depth release, fine. What do we learn out of this video then? What we've got to take out of this video, I think is a couple of things. The first thing is that you've got to be careful what it is that you're trying to change in your golf swing. Don't change characteristical things which don't have an impact on your level of consistency. Therefore, hopefully this video will mean, okay, there's five principles that you have to abide by. If you're abiding by those, then you're going to find a level of consistency. The second thing then is if you're not abiding by those five things or potentially if you are like our pro golfer or low amateur golfer is, well, okay, well, how do I get better? Making a swing change is hard. From what I've documented so far and what I'll be documenting in the future, it seems to me like you really just have to carefully plan what it is that you're trying to do. It seems quite difficult to randomly stumble across a swing change. We're going to talk about that much more moving forward, but that seems to be the early indication with people that I'm working on. If you're a better golfer, let's say like George, George this year when he's working with me won't really be making any swing changes at all. He's gonna be monitoring his progression and he's basically gonna to have to put himself in the environment of playing under pressure and all those sort of things that you know that you should be doing, but it'll be interesting to document that anyway. So that's it for today. Hopefully you found those five principles enlightening, interesting, and also something that you can work on moving forward. See you guys again soon.